is the, at this point, the, you know, the genius who's keeping this um, conference uh, going. For the last two years, Aaron has been the sole producer of of this conference, and um, last year was the best the best one that we'd seen, and I think this one's going to top that. Putting these things together is not easy. It's a tremendous amount of work. So is anybody familiar with the term uh, electroculture? Um, it's about 270, 280 years old, using high voltage uh, electrostatic fields to enhance plant growth. Uh, it's pretty much proven and, and it's indisputable that it does work. And I'm going to go through some of the history of that, some of the practical application of it, uh, share some, uh, some of the history that most people have never heard. And then I'm going to end it uh, by transitioning into a part of electroculture, a uh, very specific application that not only enhances plant growth, but goes into actually altering the gene expression of the plant. Okay, so some of the stuff that we're going to cover uh, goes into electroculture, definition history, some of the methods. He was an experimental physicist at French and Spanish universities, and he supported the idea that electricity can change how plants grow by altering the viscosity of fluids. And so if it lowers it and it reduces the surface tension to where it can move through this capillary action of plants at an enhanced rate, then possibly we can get enhanced plant growth. But obviously there has to be enough uh, water and soil and, or nutrients and everything. Um, he was the first ever to actually treat a crop, not just experiment on plants and pots, but actually you know, field trials uh, using high voltage. And um, he was kind of considered a sorcerer because um, everything he electrified, what he did was he basically electrified the water and as it electrosprayed onto the plants, um, they grew to monster sizes. So now we'll get into a few of the uh, electroculture methods, which they're all pretty, pretty much similar. They're just different variations of essentially the same thing. What you see here is you have the ground, you have a high voltage uh, supply, uh, just creating electrostatic potential. There's no current flowing except, you know, whatever current magnetizing losses in the transformer just to create that, that high voltage uh, field and you got the negative going down and it's into the earth, actual earth ground, and then you have the positive high voltage electrostatic potential um, on this wire elevated, I don't know, maybe two meters above the, um, uh, above the plants. And that's pretty much about as simple as what this particular method is. Uh, this is another electroculture method which is not using high voltage, it's using magnetism. This is the Bedini Stubblefield experiment. So um, Nathan Stubblefield was uh, uh, an inventor and researcher in the early 1900s, and he had some interesting methods with his earth battery uh, technology, which he could power these ground radios with no external output. He had a transmitter and a receiver. But uh, Bedini was, I don't know, as far as I know, the only one that ever fully replicated what, what Stubblefield was doing in terms of this experiment. Right here is uh, Lakovsky, who is the inventor of the multi-wave oscillator unit over there. Um, and what you see here is that uh, when he started um, looking into natural energies, cosmic energies, whatever you want to call it, in enhancing plant growth or overcoming disease or whatever it happens to be, what he did was he would inoculate uh, plants with different types of plant cancer that would cause these tumors and stuff, and he would take if you look at these antennas over here, you know, it's one big concentric ring, another one, another one, another one, and another one. They're not electrically connected to each other. They're insulated, so they're all capacitively coupled together. And if you take, like, one of those rings and you put it around the base of the plant, and then, uh, I guess, whatever frequency is in the environment tuned to the wavelength of whatever that, that ring happens to be, it's going to resonate at that frequency, and then in about three months, the tumors fall off and the plant normalizes. Uh, right here, um, I'm not going to read this whole thing, uh, but this is a study published in 1973. Um, let's see, 1973, and basically what this is, is this is the first comprehensive study on using atmospheric electricity to enhance plant growth, and it was a 17-year study. Uh, the, dry weight, the dry weight of cereals increased by 60%, and that of carrots by 183%. This is my presentation from last year, which is basically a unified field model based on a fluidic dynamic type of uh, ether, unified field model that the layman can understand. You don't really need a, any kind of technical background to, to get the basic concepts. 